Hello friends, this video on biological classification part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Okay, so now let us come to the portion which I was talking about. We are going to now talk about organisms which have not been included in any of the kingdoms in five kingdom classification. So right now you can see those organisms on screen that is viruses and viroids. I'm, I Maybe that you have not heard of vi viroids but I am sure that all of you would know what is virus. You would have at least heard of it. Quite strange right? We, we hear or we use this term virus so often and it is included nowhere. Why? Let us have a look. First of all what comes to your mind when you think of viruses? How do you know viruses? If I am not wrong, I am sure you all know viruses with these. You hear somebody suffering from a viral fever or a viral infection like cold, cough. So these are all viral infections and that is how we know viruses. So viruses also cause a lot of problems to us so then why are they not included anywhere so let us have a look at that actually there is a big doubt in the mind of people that whether viruses are living or non-living because what are we doing in this classification in this entire process of classification we are trying to classify the living organisms Right? So we are not going to classify chair, table, books, pens because they are all non-living. So there was a doubt whether viruses are living or non-living. And then it was concluded that viruses are non-living organisms and that is why they have not been classified. That is why they do not come under any of the five kingdoms. So now... How can we just believe that viruses are non-living? The way bacteria causes bacterial infection. Similarly, virus also causes viral infection. So why is it that bacteria is living because they come inside our body and then they create so much problem inside? So even virus is doing the same thing. So why is virus non-living? So let us see what are the points which are in favor of the fact that viruses are living and what are the points which are in favor of the fact that viruses are non-living. Let us have a look. Now, the reasons which say that viruses are non-living. First of all, no components of cell. What is a living organism made up of? What is the building block or what is the fundamental unit of a living organism? Cell. Right? We all know cells are the building blocks of our body. Viruses do not have a cell. They do not have cell at all. So when they do not have the building block, how will they be a living organism? Because we say that the basics of a living organism is cell. If you do not know A, B, C, D, how are you going to write a story in English? Right? So basics has to be there. So when the cell itself is not there, how do we say that virus is living? No, so it is non living. Again, there is no cell membrane. When there is no cell, there is no cell membrane also. It is inert. Inert means it doesn't react or doesn't respond to anyone. So it is it is lying just as it is. Like the way a pen is lying on the table, until and unless you hold it or you move it, it doesn't do anything on its own. So similar is the case with virus. No metabolism. Metabolism, what is metabolism? The set of chemical reactions which keep taking in, keep taking place inside our body. The process of digestion, respiration, circulation, excretion. So many things keep happening. So many chemical reactions keep happening inside a living organism. Nothing happens inside a virus because there are no cells at all. Because all these processes which happen even inside our body, they happen at cellular level. They happen inside the cell. When there are no cells, there is no question of any metabolism. So there is no metabolism. No reproduction on its own. They don't even reproduce. So then the question is, when they do not have any trace of metabolism, when, when they do not reproduce, so how is it that when they enter inside our body, they can cause infection? Because whenever this infection happens, we say that the viral infection increases. That means the count of viruses also increases. So if they cannot reproduce, then how is their number increasing? Okay, 
Now let us have a look at the points which say that viruses are living. So the first thing that says that it is living is it is inert that is right but it is inert only outside a living host. So what is a living host? That means if it gets another living organism inside which it can stay then it is no more inert. That means a virus outside is inert. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't react to anything. It doesn't reproduce. It doesn't do anything. No metabolism, nothing. But as soon as the same virus gets another living organism to live in, for example, if that virus enters inside the human body, so the human being becomes the host. Now the, the virus is no more inert. That's interesting. This virus possesses even though it doesn't have a cell or a cell membrane, but it has genetic material in the form of RNA and DNA. We all know what are RNA and DNA is, right? Ribox, ribonucleic acid and deoxyribonucleic acid. So it has the genetic material. So now something which has genetic material is has to be living, right? They can also reproduce or mutate when inside a living host. So here I told they don't reproduce. They don't reproduce only when they are outside a host. So what does these three points prove? They prove that viruses are a kind of organisms which on itself they are non-living. But when they get a living host, they start showing characteristics of a living organism. Now, because of this, now the question is, so the, even these points did not prove that virus is a living organism because something which is living should be living on its own. It should not depend on somebody else to be living. But in case of virus, it is not like that. If the virus is left on its own, it will not show any trace of life. Only if it gets a living host, it will show trace of life. So that is why they have finally been considered as non-living and they have not been included in any of the five kingdoms. But since viruses are a, a different type of organisms, they are also not completely non-living. That is why we are discussing about viruses separately. So let us talk about the characteristics of viruses. They are acellular, that means organisms without cell. They are known as acellular. Like, like how we have organisms with one cell, unicellular. Organisms with many cells, multicellular. Similarly, organisms without cells are acellular. They are extremely small. Now, when I say extremely, I actually mean that they are too small. Till now, whatever organisms we have ever talked about, at least the living organisms, bacteria have always been the smallest. Now, viruses are even smaller than bacteria. So you can just imagine how small are they. The name virus was given by the scientist Ivanovsky. Now, why did he call it virus? Because the word virus means a poison. It means poisonous substance. So why did he call this so? Because the way virus was discovered was that it, it enters into a living organism and causes some trouble to that organism, causes some infection, some trouble to that organism. So it acts like a poison. So as such, it is non-living. But as soon as it gets a living host, so it tries to uh, poison that living host. It tries to harm that living host. So that is why the term virus, which means poisonous substance, was given to these organisms. They are inert only outside host. That is a very important thing to note here. They are obligate parasites. As I said, they always try to harm the host. So they are parasite because they depend on another living organisms for their ex existence. They are obligate parasite. That means they just can't do without a parasite. If there is no other parasite, so they will not leave. So they live only because of that host. So obligate parasites, the parasites that cannot complete its life cycle without exploiting a suitable host. So they definitely need a living host to complete their life cycle. So these are some of the uh, general characteristics of virus. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.